Kakasana or crow pose is the pose I'm going to show you uh, what I do for students uh, when they're working on it. Now, the most common thing that happens is people don't lean forward enough, and that goes for almost every single arm balance and inversion. And anything that's really scary in life, you have to lean forward. You have to go towards that cliff, look over it, and stop yourself. And so what I like to do, aside from using props, this is going to be a bit more of like personal encouragement, um, but also standing there with my hands on the student to make sure that they know I'm not going to let them smash their face on the ground. Okay, so come on into your Malasana prep. Typically, what I like to do before a student does this is let them know that there are a couple of ways to do your kakasana crow. Either if they're really, really tight, uh, I work like this with my daughter because her arm strength is not quite there. They can always do the variation with their knees on the outsides of the arms. And notice how low knees a little further out on the outsides of the arms. Yeah. When a student does this, notice how low their hips are. This becomes a lot easier for a student to lean forward because there's not so much weight going forward. One foot lifts off the ground and then the other. Good. Rest. So when a student can do this, that's great. They're learning how to get their weight onto their hands. But again, observe how it's not that rounded. In the Kakasana that I teach, um, it's actually a prep for bakasana crane. So the knees are in a different position and there's a lot more protraction in the shoulder blades rather than retraction. So I usually try to teach a student by putting their hands on the ground, coming onto tabletop position and doing cat so that they understand that when they're in kakasana, Doing cat will create the space for their knees to come high up on the triceps as well as help them really contract the front body. Okay, so in that cat position, you're going to go back into cat, walk your knees up onto your triceps as high as you can. Now, I'm going to let them know, I'm not going to let you fall. <laughs> Put a little bend in your elbows. I'm standing in front of them in a little bit of a squat with my hands on their shoulders, asking them to put more and more weight into my hands. Lift one foot up first, point the toes towards your butt, keep the belly and the ribs drawing in. See if you can lean even further forward to lift the other foot up. And sometimes I'm holding a lot of weight, sometimes I'm not, but I don't step away. And then they come back down onto the ground and I say, good job. High five, you did a great job. <laughs> Encouragement as well as making sure that you're communicating that you're there for your student, especially when they're trying something that scares them, is so important because that's going to give them the foundation to really grow and approach these scarier poses again and again. It's when a student or even ourselves have bad experiences with poses that we don't want to try them again. So make sure that you're comforting them, that you're letting them know that they're safe, and that your adjustments or your spotting techniques are actually solid and there for them. And then, good job. <laughs>